Welcome back to another edition of Bourbon Kingdom. I'm David. And I'm Zach. And today we are going to talk about uh, six tips to kind of get you started in uh, collecting bourbon. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we have been asked a lot, kind of like, hey, what are good bottles to look for? How is a good way to kind of build a collection and stuff like that. So with all these questions, we're like, you know what? We should just do a video on it. Yeah, let's just, do a video. You know, clearly people have thoughts. So we might as well put them on a video. Yeah. For ours. So the very first one we're going to start with. Uh, uh, before we do that, like, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Um, yeah, that, that way. Too. Let's get let's get that, <laughs> let's get that out of the way. Like and subscribe. Uh, we love it when you all do that. So And keep also, doing it. if you have any from our six tips, if you have anything to add to it, please add. Yeah. Or if you think we're wrong or think we're right, go ahead and let us know uh, in the comment section below. So, anyways, first one we're going to do, whenever you're starting a bourbon collection, you got to be smart about this. Okay? So, you can't just go, I, well, I mean, you can just go to a liquor store and buy whatever you want. But, you know, this stuff's expensive. Like, at the end of the day, it it takes, you know, a little bit of cash. You know, know where you stand with that. Do your research. Know what you like. Know what you don't like. Now, when I say do your research, there's plenty of magazines and books and lists and YouTube accounts and Instagram accounts, everywhere else. You can go out there and follow people. And sure, that doesn't mean you should buy everything that they recommend. But if you find somebody who you trust their palate or their palate aligns with you, then maybe you should, you know, follow a couple of their kind of you know, leads on certain bottles. Yeah, there I, I, as I, well. yeah, I think that's true. Uh, it, number two, uh, it is not all about allocation. That's uh, true. It seems like it is, <laughs> but it's not all about all allocation. Like, there are good everyday bottles that you should have in your collection. Like, as you're starting a collection, there are some everyday things that you should have, like yep. a Buffalo Trace, like... Um, even though it's kind of like allocated it, it kind of is <laughs> I'm not even talking about a store I'm, pick. I'm, I'm just kidding. saying like a regular old yeah. Buffalo Trace uh, yeah. uh, Evan Williams Bottle and Bond uh, uh, Woodford Double Oak mm -hmm. uh, you know just things like that that aren't allocated but they're they're decent and uh, well not all of those are not all of those are ones that they'll do store picks with but a lot you know some of those are ones that they'll do store picks like a, a, a Woodford Double Oak yeah. um, a lot of our local stores will do store picks with those, and generally they're when really they have good. The yeah, bourbon. and they're not allocated. They're just uh, it's a that's a good everyday bourbon to have in there. Um, find good stores store picks, and you'll I think you'll be happy with it. Not, I, I mean, everybody likes to see the pictures of your Weller and your, you know, your B tac stuff. Oh, those are great pictures, but sure. And not and everybody gets them. And don't get us and, and, and don't get us wrong. We we hunt allocation. Like, yeah, know, we, we were out, we were out over the weekend hunting yeah, allocation. We do. So we get it. But that also doesn't mean that all allocation's good. Like we've talked about some out, highly mm -hmm. allocated bottles that we don't hunt for, we don't look for. Yeah. Not that we wouldn't, you know, if it was in the store, would we buy it? Probably, sure. But we're not going to go out and stress about it. We're not going to go out and just start hunting like crazy for it. Yeah, no, we're definitely not going to do you that. You know, there's a lot of barrel picks out there that are just way better than some of this allocation that we all go crazy at. And they don't cost you an arm and a leg. That's very, very true. And it's not the stress of Most of the time, they'll just cost, cost you a hand, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Anymore. That's yeah. totally true. All right. So number three, uh, don't be tricked by a label. And whenever I talk about that, you know, I'm talking about you see these, you know, these, ter you know, these different terms like small batch and bottle and bond and, and, you know, that kind of stuff. And you're like, oh, well, it's a small batch. It has to be good. Well, there's not really like a definition. Like it could be two barrels. It could be a thousand barrels. Like it could be a whole bunch and bottle and bond. Sure. They have rules that they have to follow. That doesn't mean that it's going to be good mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So true. You know, like yep. there's, I, I have so many bottles back there that say bottle and bond or a small batch. You know, and it's trash. Same thing with like barrel proof, like just because it's a higher proof or, you know, cast strength or whatever it says. Don't be fooled by that. Like some of that stuff is good. You know, transparency is actually really good. If you can find a label, like I, I say this all the time, Bargetown, the Discovery Series is awesome because, yes, they can't say where it's from. They say the state. They say the Nashville. 
it's not hard to use Google at that point. Mm -hmm. And you can figure it out, you know, like, and you have the age of it and everything else. You know, when people ask me more than anything, like whenever you look at something, what are you looking for? Transparency is number one. It just is. I like to know the age of stuff. You know, I think age can in some ways give you value, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean it's good. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But yeah, so just, you know, remember. But it is nice to see what, like, to know what's in the bottle. Well, and yeah, and here's, you know, really the big problem is with that is like your major brands, you know where it's all coming from. Your Wild Turkey, your Buffalo Traces and stuff like that. It's your real small mom and pop distilleries that whenever they're not transparent with it, which I don't blame them necessarily for not wanting to be, but it makes it hard. because They're they're building their brand. They are. But then they're spending, now they're asking you to spend 60 to 90 bucks on a bottle. You don't know where it came from. Never heard of this distillery. Yeah. And it's tough because there's a because we all know, including myself, from chasing after some of these smaller distilleries that you've never heard of. Yeah. You buy some stuff that's not good. Yep. Yep. So for sure. Makes it tough. Yep. Uh number four, uh, and this is key, uh, honestly, of it's, all these it's, things. It's I think it's the most important point. It really is. If I'm being honest. Uh have a budget. <laughs> yes. Uh this bourbon hunting and bourbon uh uh thing is it can it can drain your wallet yeah it really can it's not cheap and so <clears throat> for yourself have a budget maybe it's a monthly budget maybe it's whatever uh um, because it's easy to overspend it's easy to have fomo too like you'll see something on facebook that's like hey liquor barn just dropped this and you're like i really don't have the money for that but I don't want to miss out on this bottle. Exactly. Like I'm, gonna, I want to go get it. And so, exactly. yeah, you got to kind of have a a budget in mind when you're when you're doing this because the truth is you can you, you can just spend so much money and not know where it went. Well, and like I see people all the time that spend so much money on stuff that you can get every single day. Yeah, and that's not necessarily bad. I'm not telling you that you can't buy like everyday shelfers, and that's a bad thing. But I've seen guys and gals walk out of grocery stores or liquor stores or whatever it is. They have six, seven bottles on there. And, the know, truth, and yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And the truth is, in any given month, one of the distilleries is going to release something. Yeah, Most yeah, of the time, yeah, they're yeah. all going to release something every month. And yeah. so you just got to think in your head, like, what do I want to get this month? And here's what I got to spend on it. And, and and kind of keep that in mind so that you, you you know what you're going after, especially if you're uh, in this bourbon collection thing and you're trying to like up your bourbon collection and getting to a different tier of collection. Like, oh, yeah. I remember when I first started, um, I got a McKenna and I was really super stoked that I got a McKenna. I, again, I was super stoked because like they're sometimes hard to find. Um, sure. Yeah, and, that's fair. And so... Like, I was like, oh, I went to the store and it was there. And this is when I was first collecting. I was like, and now I find myself, I pass those up because yeah. I'm looking for the bigger thing. Sure. Um, but I've budgeted for it. And I know, like, what I have in my in my wallet or in my Venmo account at any given time to know what I can spend at any given moment if, it, if the opportunity arises. Well, and I also, and, you know, I put this on the list to have a budget. And he, he agreed with me right away. And it made me think, I know people who have maxed out credit cards. <clears throat> like, no. maxed out credit cards on whiskey. Like, at the end of the day, that's crazy to me. And I don't know their amounts. And it's not my business to ask or whatever. But they've told me. like, And I've heard of people having issues with their spouses over this. Yeah. Which I understand. Like, you know, that, you know, like, yeah, of course. Yeah. I understand. If you max out a credit card. Yeah. Of course you're having You issue. can take a chance on some things, and sometimes it pays off, but sometimes it doesn't pay off. And yeah. so you're stuck holding the bag or the yeah. bottle in this just, case, and you're like, mm, just really... I'm never going to get my money back out of this. Yeah, just really pay attention to, yep. to what you're spending and stuff like yep. that. So, all right. So number five, and this is something that nobody thinks about when they first get into it, and then they realize real quick, like, oh, crap. It's so true. You're going to need space, okay? Now, whenever you first start out, maybe you have a nice little bar at your house, or you have a liquor cabinet, or you have a bar cart, like you have a bar cart. I do have a bar cart. How long I had a bar cart last year until you filled it up? <laughs> it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's overflowing. My wife bought it for me in 2019. 
uh, and and I had like four. I had four bourbons <laughs> on it, <laughs> and now I'm like like squeezing things in, putting bourbon underneath the it's bottom like of it. Stacking so, bottles. Yeah, bottles. Yeah, it really is. So like it from, doesn't it doesn't take long to yeah to fill it up like because then you start to like you start to find like everyday drinkers that you want and those uh-huh. take up space and then you mm-hmm. have allocated ones that you have and they take up space and it, totally agree. it doesn't take long i mean it, i mean look at that i mean i yeah and, so and if i turn the camera <laughs> and showed you it's a mess but if i showed you this place is a disaster it really it's a mess. is it's it really a disaster. is but there's bourbon everywhere in his basement like everywhere he's got a he's got a shelf they're on the ground. <laughs> if you walk in the wrong place, it's like, a, boxes. Like, it's like a landmine that you're going to hit. And he's like, <laughs> watch out for that box. It, it is going to explode. Uh, there's just all kinds of stuff there. Now, this has been a long time of collecting. And I get all that. But what was hilarious was I told him, I said, hey, because I, I had all these bottles scattered, scattered out everywhere for video ideas and stuff like that. I'm like, I'm going to go get like a, like a big metal rack and I'm going to store them that way. So that way we can look at them. And try to talk over ideas. I filled it up that day. I really need like three. You really do. And, and I'm like, and I can fill them all up. Yeah. Plus I have this. Plus I have my stuff upstairs. He's got some stuff hidden somewhere too. I'm not sure. He's got a bunker somewhere. Uh, maybe in the backyard. I'm not sure. But it's it's somewhere. Just the, the point is. I mean, I got to hide from the him. point You'll is see the healthy pores. if you have a if you have a thousand square foot house, it's not enough room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just. This goes back to thinking about what you're buying and everything else, because I share a lot of pours with a lot of friends. And he I, really does. He, and, and I still he have has a lot of bottles. A lot. And he has a lot of bottles, but he's also very generous with his bottles. Like, I just poured some mid-summer night's dram. Summer? Some winter's dram. When, when, listen, I've drank too much of this. Uh, I poured two and a half ounces. <laughs> Act Nine, Scene One, which is the <laughs> honestly, it's the best of the scenes of Act Nine. Uh, it, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, and he's generous. He didn't. He got mad at me a little bit for pouring a two and a half ounce, pour. <laughs> but not too mad. There is one other point to this uh, about needing space. Whenever you go to store bottles, remember this. This is not. I mean, I think most people know this, but for everybody who's new, just remember this. You know, your whiskey is not like wine. You have to store it up. It has to be away from the corks. If not, it'll just eat away the cork and then you have problems. You know, it'll ruin the yep. whiskey and everything else. And also, keep away from sunlight. So, like, downstairs where, where we actually... It's like record. gremlins. <laughs> yeah. Keep it away from sunlight. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> I knew exactly where you are going. I was just waiting for you to sprinkle water on it. <laughs> You know, I have windows downstairs in my basement, and I've had to block them because in certain spots, you know, where the the racks and stuff are, they do, you know, they are exposing to the sun. So I've had yeah. to block those as well. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind whenever you store stuff, and just remember: the longer you're in this game, the more storage you're gonna need, the more space you're gonna need. Yeah. All right. Last, and we're gonna finish up with this, and we don't really have to spend a whole lot of time on this, other than. Uh, find a store that you'd like to go to. It could be close to your house. It could be uh, whatever and support it. Yeah. And by support it, it means buy your regular stuff there. Buy your yeah. buy your beer there. Buy your ice there. Buy your mixed cocktail your soda, stuff there. Whatever. Your White Claws. Buy those there. And you Don't just keep... I mean, some people love White Claws. So I'm just saying, whatever you buy from an alcohol standpoint... Go there, yeah, um, and and keep going there, and take ten minutes and just sit and talk to whoever the store clerk is, and just shoot the breeze with yeah. them. Um, make sure that they know who you are. Make sure they know your name, and they make sh- make sure that they know that you come in there all the time and you spend money there because yeah. that's going to pay off. Develop a friendship, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Develop a friendship. And if you're at a store that's by you and you don't feel like you're developing a friendship, go find, your, go find a new store. Yep. A lot of people will stress saying, well, you know, I'm trying to find a mom and pop store or a locally owned store, which is great. Like, I, I, I fully support that. That's great. If that's not working, go to, uh, you know, if you have to go to a bigger store, a liquor barn, a Total Wine, a, you know, a Benny's, whatever it is, go to one of those and... You know, support that store. Yeah. My point is, 
you know, it's it's going to help you with collecting whiskey because they're going to be able to send you, the, you know, the right. Especially the allocated stuff. The allocated stuff does help, sure. But then, like, store picks and stuff like that. And they, you know, the store I go to all the time, you know, they have a bar. And I can try stuff there at the bar. And it helps me develop my palate. And, you know, I can figure out what I like and what I don't like. And just little things like that that people don't think about. Like, yep. if you're just going into the same store every day and you're saying, you got any planes? You got any Weller? <laughs> you got any Pappies? Like, guess uh, what? They're going to tell you to go kick rocks and leave. Like, they're... You, because they get a thousands of they get thousands of those a day. You go in and you just talk to them. Yeah, just be like, "Hey, how are you doing today?" Be real, be legit. Just you know, again, and if you don't want to do that, that's fine. But it will be harder, I think, over the long term. To it is stuff out. It's that's definitely just my opinion. It is definitely di- more difficult. So, so anyways, find the store. Yep. Those are our six, you know, tips for you know, kind of. You know, starting a bourbon collection and growing your bourbon collection. Yep. You know, let us know. Like I said, like we already said this below. Let us know in the comments below. Let us know some of your ideas or, you know, if you agree or disagree or anything else like that. Yep. Well, so, till next time. We'll see you. See you.